بالشرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد Again So I'll hope inshallah from now on we'll be able to start our halaqa without having to notify some people to if they have a conversation they can have it somewhere else and come back inshallah <coughs> so who reminds us where we what was the last thing we mentioned last week the last incident we covered last week was banu shayban banu shayban banu shayban now banu shayban we said they are from the bigger tribe of Rabi'ah, the bigger tribe of Rabi'ah. And we said uh, they're one of the biggest tribes. They lived in Iraq, what's known today as North Iraq. Actually, this is where um, the Kurds are today. In Arabic, for those who know some about the Arabic history, uh, what is um, supposedly called the lands of the Kurds or Kurdistan, etc. Uh, so it extends over northern Iraq. South Turkey, uh, East Iran as well. It's that area where the Kurds or this ethnicity uh, actually uh, reside today. It's called Diyaru Bani Bakr. Diyaru Bani Bakr. So it was inhabited by Arabs, mainly by uh, the Rabi'a tribe, specifically this clan of it, and that's the clan of uh, the clan of uh, Banu Shayban. And we said that Imam, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah ta'ala, actually his lineage goes back to this uh, clan. And so his name is uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal al-Shaybani. Ahmad ibn Hanbal al-Shaybani. So we said the Prophet sallam approached them. He was with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and with Ali ibn Abi Talib. He approached them, spoke with them. And uh, it was a very beautiful reception. It was a beautiful conversation, a beautiful reception. Yet they said to the Prophet ﷺ, we'll go back, we'll consult with our people, then we will get back to you. Then the Prophet ﷺ moves on and he finds another group that came from Yathrib. They came from Yathrib. So these are these were pil pilgrims coming from Yathrib, which is Medina. And this was during the Hajj season. So the Prophet ﷺ, with Abu Bakr, he goes and meets them. So he says to them, where are you from? They, says, they say, we are from Al-Khazraj. So we know there are two main tribes in, in Yathrib, two Arab tribes, Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj. The Khazraj were a majority. Al-Aws were, were smaller in number. So these are from Al-Khazraj. So the Prophet ﷺ says, Amin Mawali Yahud, you are the neighbors of the Jewish tribes in, in, in Yathrib? They said, yes, indeed. So the Prophet ﷺ says, أَفَلَا تَجْلِسُونَ أُكَلِّمُكُمْ Would you like to have a chat? They said, why not? Why not? So the Prophet ﷺ starts calling them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, explaining to them what Allah is, what Islam is, what the Qur'an calls to. And uh, subhanAllah, the narrator of this narration says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted good with the people, well for the people of Medina, because there was a history to this. So when the some of these people in from Medina heard the speech of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they started saying to each other, they said, "This is the man that the Jewish tribes used to warn us against. They used to warn us against." And basically, what what was the story? The story behind this was that the Jewish tribes they used to say to where's this. Can you close your Bible, please? So the... Huh? There's no door? Sorry, Allah knows what. Allah knows what's up. So the Jewish tribes, they used to say to these people, in, uh, in, in the Arabs in, in Yathrib, they used to say to them, this is the time of a prophet that's going to come soon. This is the time of a prophet that going that's going to come soon. When he comes, we shall join him, 
and we shall fight with him against you and we shall get rid of you. We shall annihilate, wipe you out of the face of earth. So when these people from Al-Khazraj listened to what the Prophet had to say, they turned to each other and they said, Wallahi inna hadha lahu wa nabiyu alladhi tawa'adakum bihi yahud. This is the Prophet that the Jewish tribes used to warn you uh, and threaten you with when he comes back. So let's get to him before the others. Let's get to, get to him before them. So they actually discussed it among themselves and the narration goes, the Prophet ﷺ did not leave until they gave him bay'ah. They gave him bay'ah. What, what does that mean? They, they accepted Islam. They accepted Islam and gave the Prophet ﷺ their word. They gave the Prophet ﷺ their word to accept Islam, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to support the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and there are certain things that inshallah we will come to. So now, yes, with the, uh, the bigger tribe of Rabi'ah and the small clan of Banu Shayban, there was no like positive response in the sense, immediate response. Yet, on the same day, meeting with Al-Khazraj, the Prophet ﷺ walks away with this group among them having embraced Islam and accepted Islam and they became Muslim. So these people go back to uh, to Medina and they start speaking, preaching Islam to their families. They started uh, sharing Islam with their families. So the narration goes that someone in Medina accepts Islam by means of one of those. He hears about Islam, he accepts Islam, he travels to Mecca, he goes and sits with the Prophet ﷺ for a few days, he learns some Quran, he learns some Hadith, and he learns what to practice from Islam. Then he goes back to Medina, uh, back to Yathrib, and he starts practicing Islam and maybe calling other people to Islam. The following year, the following year, which is the, in the same Hajj season, the Prophet ﷺ meets 12 people from Yathrib, and these were new Muslims. Most of them were new Muslims. 12 people. And this is called Bay'atul Aqaba al Ula. The first meeting with the Prophet ﷺ people from Medina who had already accepted Islam, so they joined the Prophet ﷺ in a secret meeting where they give the Prophet ﷺ bay'ah. Bay'ah means covenant, agreement. What was what did it constitute? Basically, the Prophet ﷺ told them, Ta'alu bay'uni ala alla tushriku billahi shay'a. He said, give me your word not to associate partners with Allah in worship, wala tasriku, wala tazni, and yet that you do not steal you do not engage in adultery. And that you do not kill your children. And that you do not commit any kind of act of lewdness or sin, whether with your hands or whether it, it has to do with sexual acts. And that you obey me with what is good. Allah. Whoever stays true to this covenant, his reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Woman asaba min dalika shay'an, and whoever falls into any of these sins, fa'uqiba bihi fi dunya fa huwa kafaratun lah. So anyone who falls into a sin, then Allah punishes him in this by, by means of a hardship or a calamity or distress or pain or anything, then this will be an expiation for his sin. Woman asaba min dalika shay'an fa satarahu Allah fa amruhu ila Allah. And whoever falls into a sin, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not expose him. And Allah does not punish him in this life with any hardship or any uh, difficulty. Then his affair is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah could either forgive him or Allah could punish him on the day of judgment. So they gave the Prophet ﷺ their agreement and then they uh, left to Medina. So one of those early Muslims from Medina who gave the Prophet ﷺ the bay'ah, uh, his name was Ubad ibn Samit, the famous companion. He says, Kuntu fi man hadara al-aqabata al-ula wa kunna ithnay ashara rajulan. He says, I was one of, the one of the people who gave the Prophet the first bay'ah of al-aqaba. We were 12 men, 12 males, gave the bay'ah to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then they go back to Medina. They go back to Yathrib. Now this time, more people, the number is growing, the number of Muslims is growing now in Medina. So people are coming to Mecca traveling. New Muslims are traveling from Medina. They come and meet the Prophet ﷺ, spend some days with him, learn some Quran, learn the etiquettes of Islam, then they go back to Medina. And during this year, the narration says 
There was hardly any family in Medina except that you would find a Muslim member among them. It reached that point. Islam started spreading in Medina so rapidly, unlike Mecca. Unlike Mecca, it started spreading so rapidly. Now, the Muslims realized it was such a tough task for them to start leaving Medina and go to Mecca, travel to Mecca, spend days. So they sent to the Prophet ﷺ, they said to him, بَعَثُوا إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. They sent to the Prophet ﷺ, someone to convey a message. أَنْ إِبْعَثْ إِلَيْنَا رَجُلًا مِنْ قِبَلِكَ Send one of your companions to us. فَيَدْعُوا النَّاسَ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ Let him call people to the book of Allah. فَإِنَّهُ أَدْنَى أَنْ يُتَّبَعَ It's more likely that people would listen to him. People would accept his call. Why? Because he spent, a l- he would, must, one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, he must have spent a lot of time with the Prophet ﷺ. So he knows what to preach. And he knows how to approach people. فَبَعَثَ إِلَيْهِمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet ﷺ sent to them Mus'ab ibn Umair. He sent Mus'ab ibn Umair. Mus'ab ibn Umair. He sent him to Medina. أَخَى بَنِي عَبْدِ الدَّارِ فَنَزَلَ عَلَى فِي بَنِي غُنْ He went into the clan of Bani Ghun, one, you know, one of the clans in Medina. Their leader was As'ad ibn Zurara, one of the early Muslims in Medina. Mark this name, As'ad ibn Zurara. As'ad ibn Zurara. He's going to have some contribution, mashaAllah. فَجَعَلَ يَدْعُ النَّاسَ سِرًّا Mus'ab ibn Umair started calling people to Islam secretly in Medina. Why secretly? Because he's a stranger. He's a stranger. We know this is a tribalistic society. If a stranger is being active, like he's showing a lot of, you know, activism, that's not that wasn't a good sign. That wasn't taken lightly by that society. People will start have security issues, doubts about him. So he started calling people secretly. فَيَفْشُلْ إِسْلَامُ وَيَكْثُرُ أَهْلُ Islam was spreading, spreading rapidly in Medina, and more there were more Muslims now in Medina. وَهُمْ فِي ذَلِكَ مُسْتَخْفِينَ بِدُعَائِهِمْ And Muslims were still sort of playing it low key. Like keeping low key practice of Islam, because they don't want to, they don't want to get in trouble. Now Mus'ab ibn Umair in Medina is still teaching and preaching. New Muslims are learning from him. Non-Muslims are hearing from he's hearing from him. He's approaching them, telling them about Allah, about the Quran, about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and people are accepting Islam, and the number of Muslims is growing. But one day, the leader of Al Khazraj, Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, Sa'd ibn Mu'adh. Like his main, the thing where he stands out is military uh, caliber. He's a very, he's a military leader and primarily a military person, very strong person. And he's a li- political leader at the same time. So he hears about that. He hears about Mus'ab ibn Umayr being there teaching Muslims with, with As'ad ibn Zurara. So he puts on his armor, takes his sword and his shield. And he waits till the time he was informed, when does Mus'ab ibn Umayr come and starts teaching people? So he goes to them, goes to that place. Then he catches them by surprise. And he says to As'ad ibn Zurara, he said, فَقَالَ لِأَسْعَدْ ibn Zurara, أَلَا مَا تَأْتِينَا فِي دُورِنَا بِهَذَا الْوَحِيدِ الْفَرِيدِ الطَّرِيحِ الْغَرِيبِ He says, why do you bring this stranger man, this lonely stranger man, bring him to our home, He's lonely, stranger, and he doesn't have, doesn't have support. We don't even know him. يُسَفِّهُ بُعَثَاءَنَا بِالْبَاطِلِ He brainwashes the weaker ones among us. He brainwashes the weaker ones among us. وَيَدْعُوهُمْ وَيَدْعُوكُمْ إِلَيْهِ And he's calling you to follow him. To follow him. وَلَا أَرَاكُمْ بَعْدَهَا بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ جِوَارِنَا Then he says, Don't let me see you here again. Don't let me see you here again. <laughs> you here again. And when Sa'd ibn Mu'ad says this, this is a threat. This is a serious threat. It's not a joke. It's not like two people having a quarrel. No, you're talking about the military leader, the strongest military leader in Medina. He's saying, don't let me see you around. I don't want to see you around. So <coughs> they leave. Mus'ab ibn Umair, As'ad ibn Zurara, the Muslims leave. They're still the weaker ones. Then they find another place by a well called Bi'ru uh, Maraq. Okay, it's a well in, in the outskirts of Medina. 
So they start meeting there. <coughs> Sa'd ibn Mu'adh is informed again about them. He says, okay, this time I'm not going to leave. So he goes. Again, he gets ready. He takes his arm, uh, his uh, sword with him. And then he, uh, like he goes, he, he surprises them by showing up. Then he threatens them again. But As'ad ibn Zurara notices that the tone of threats this time is not very strong. It's not as severe as the first time. So the narration goes, فَلَمَّا رَأَى أَسْعَدْ فَتَوَعَدَهُمْ دُونَ الْوَعِيدِ الْأَوَّلِ He gave them a threat that wasn't as harsh as the first time. فَلَمَّا رَأَى أَسْعَدُ بْنُ زُرَارَ مِنْهُ لِينًا When Asad ibn Zurara noticed, there's some leniency there. He's not as serious as the first time. قَالَ يَبْنَ خَالَهُ He says, oh my cousin. And that's a way to show friendliness among the Arabs. To say, oh my brother. Okay, if they are equal in, in uh, like they're similar in age. If you're speaking to a younger one and you want to show friendliness and affection, you say, يَا بْنَ أَخِي Oh my nephew, even though he's a stranger. And if he's somehow similar to you in age, but still there's a distance between you and him, but you want to show that affection, you say, يَا بْنَ عَمْ أو يَا بْنَ خَالَ Oh my cousin, oh my cousin. So he says, يَا بْنَ خَالَ أسمع من قلبي He says, oh my cousin, listen to what he has to say. فَإِنْ سَمِعْتَ مُنْكَرًا if you see something wrong, respond to it, refute it with something better. Give us something better. But if you hear something that is true, then accept it. Accept it. So Sa'ad says, what does he call to? So the leniency was real. Yes, now he wanted to know what was going on. فقرأ عليه مصعب بن عمير حامي مثل ما نحن حامي والكتاب المبين إن جعلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون. He started reciting some verses from the Quran. When Sa'd bin Mu'adh listened to this, he says, ما أسمع إلا ما أعرف. He says, I recognize what I hear. It makes sense. What he's reciting makes sense to me. فرجع وقد هداه الله تعالى. Upon hearing these words. Sa'd ibn Mu'adh leaves and he's been affected by the Qur'an. In his heart, he accepted Islam. He accepted Islam, but he did not show it. He didn't show it. Don't forget, he's a leader. He w he's wise. He knows how to run affairs. He didn't show anyone. He didn't give any impression. He just left. وَلَمْ يُظْهِرْ لَهُمُ الْإِسْلَامِ He didn't show any signs of Islam. حَتَّى رَجَعَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ Until he goes back to his clan, his people. فَدَعَى بَنِي الْأَشْهَلْ إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ He called his specific clan, بَنُوا الْأَشْهَلْ, who are part from Al-Khazraj. Probably the biggest clan or the biggest division in Al-Khazraj. He calls them to his house. All of them come. وَأَظْهَرَ إِسْلَامَهُ Then he announces his Islam. He says, I'm a Muslim. I believe. أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَا اللَّهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهُ وَقَالْ مَنْ شَكَّ فِيهِ مِنْ صَغِيرٍ أَوْ كَبِيرٍ Anyone who has doubt about Islam, whether you are young or old, أو أنثى أو ذكر whether you are a male or a female فليأتنا بأهدا منه نأخذ به if you have any doubt about this bring us something that is more guided that has more guidance in it and we would follow it then he says فوالله لقد جاء أمر لتحزن فيه الرقاب he says this is an affair that's going to bring about a lot of killing there's a lot of slaying there because people don't like this People who have power, they're not going to like this. So this is something that will lead to a lot, a lot of killing will happen. A lot of fighting will happen. So he says, let's have a clear stance. If you have an issue, bring it up now. He says, I'm a Muslim. You either bring something more guided than this, then we'll follow it. If not, that's what we are following. He's a leader. And don't forget, this is a tribalistic society. Now that's the leader of this division. He says, that's what we're following. Basically, no one can disagree. M some individuals might disagree, but that would be insignificant. So the narration says, فَأَسْلَمَتْ بَنُوا عَبْدِ الْأَشْهَلْ بَنُوا عَبْدِ الْأَشْهَلْ This division from Al-Khazraj, all of them, all of them, all of them accept Islam. Except for a few individuals. فَأَسْلَمَتْ بَنُوا عَبْدِ الْأَشْهَلْ عِنْدَ إِسْلَامِ سَعْدِ بْنِ مُعَادِ وَدُعَائِهِ إِلَّا مَنْ لَمْ يُذْكَرْ So all of them accepted Islam based on this meeting. Except for a few individuals who are insignificant. 
فكانت أول دور من دور الأنصار أسلمت في أسرهم. This is the first division in Medina among the tribe that accepts Islam entirely. Now you can imagine, now Muslims are be growing to be not only a small minority, but a large minority now. A large minority. And soon they will become a majority. ثم إن بن النجار أخرجوا مصعب بن عمير. Now بن النجار Another division or another clan from Al Khazraj, they kick Mus'ab ibn Umayr, they threaten him. If you stay here, we're going to kill you. Stay in Medina. They, they felt the threats. Now, Banu Abdul Ashal are becoming Muslim. A lot of people are becoming Muslim. Maybe that's, you know, the, the balance of power is going to change. They're not going to, you know, stay silent or wait until something serious happens. They decided to deal with him now and get him out of here. So they threatened Mus'ab ibn Umayr and they wanted him to leave uh, Medina, to leave Yathrib. Now, As'ad ibn Zurara is not as strong as Sa'd ibn Mu'adh. As'ad ibn Zurara is still the host of Mus'ab ibn Umayr. So Mus'ab ibn Umayr moves to the house of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh now. When he moved to Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, even Banu Najjar cannot open their mouth. <laughs> now they can't open their mouth. No one can mess with Sa'd ibn Mu'adh. No one can mess with Sa'd ibn Mu'adh. So he stays with Sa'd ibn Mu'adh and he invites people to Islam and Allah guides many people more through him uh, to Islam. As we said, until there is almost no house in Medina except that you will find a Muslim member in it. I mean Muslim individual in it. وَأَسْلَمَ أَشْرَافُهُمْ And the, the leaders, the elites in Medina started entering into Islam. Not only common people uh, not only the masses, but even the leaders, people with high status, they are accepting Islam, like Amr ibn al-Jamuh. وَكُسِرَتْ أَصْنَامُهُمْ And some of their asnam, idols, were destroyed in public. This didn't happen in Mecca. It happened in Medina within two years. Within two years, this is how much powerful Muslims became. They gained so much ground. وَكَانَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ أَعَزَّ أَهْلِهَا and The Muslims became the most visible division, the most div visible group in Medina, and the most prominent. وَصَلَحَ أَمْرُهُمْ And the Muslims, like, they became well established. وَرَجَعَ مُسْعَبِ بْنُ عُمَيْرِ إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now Mus'ab has fulfilled his mission, he goes back to Mecca. He goes back to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَكَانَ يُدْعَى الْمُقْرِئِ His title, his name was Al-Muqri' the, the teacher, basically. The teacher. So he goes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now it's the following Hajj season. The following Hajj season. So the Hajj groups from Medina are leaving from Medina to Mecca to make the Hajj, to make the pilgrimage. And s these are people in the thousands. These are people in the thousands. Now among them this year are Muslims. Muslims are part of the Hajj caravan. But they're not going to Hajj as Muslims openly. Everyone is with their own clan, with their own tribe, with their own group. But they are Muslims. And they go and they perform Hajj. Now among them was one of their seniors. His name was Al-Bara' ibn Ma'roor. Al-Bara' ibn Ma'roor. And among them was Ka'b ibn Malik. Ka'b ibn Malik. Anyone knows what stands out about Ka'b ibn Malik from the Ansar? Ka'b ibn Malik, <laughs> one of the, yes, one of the three people who remained in Medina when the Prophet ﷺ went in the, ba in the battle or the expedition of Tabuk, right? Ka'b ibn Malik, and he was a poet, a famous poet, radiyallahu anhu. So he says, خَرَجْنَا فِي الْحَجَّةِ الَّتِي بَايَعْنَا فِيهَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ we set out in Hajj during the time when we gave the Prophet ﷺ the bay'ah. That's another bay'ah. Uh, with the non-Muslims among our people. وَمَعْنَا الْبَرَاءُ بْنُ مَعْرُورُ And among us, the Muslims, the most senior among us, الْبَرَاءُ بْنُ مَعْرُورُ كَبِيرُنَا وَسِيرُنَا He's the most senior among them. حَتَّى إِذَا كُنَّا بِظَاهِرِ الْبَيْدَاءِ Until we reach an area called Bayda between Mecca and Medina, قال يا هؤلاء يا هؤلاء تعلمون أني قد رأيت رأيا. He said to the Muslims, you know, I have an opinion. 
والله ما أدري توافقون عليه أم لا I don't know whether you agree with me or not فقلنا وما هو يا أبا بشر He said what is it أبا أبو بشر is his كنية He says إني قد أردت أن أصلي إلى هذه البنية I want to when I pray I want to face الكعبة At the time Muslims when they pray they face بيت المقدس المسجد الأقصى Okay they pray في المسجد الأقصى أول القبلتين so, but he says, I have an opinion. I want to pray towards Al Kaaba. Now, as you're traveling from Medina to Mecca, Al Masjid Al Aqsa is to the north, and Al Kaaba is to the south. So, if you're going to face Al Masjid Al Aqsa, you're going to give your back to Al Kaaba. If you're going to face Al Kaaba, you're going to give your back to Al Masjid Al Aqsa. But the Muslims at the time were. And the Prophet وسلم, all the Muslims were praying towards Al Masjid Al Aqsa or praying towards Al Masjid Al Aqsa. So he says, I want to pray to this Kaaba, and I'm not going to give it my back. I'm not going to give Kaaba my back. فقلنا, لا, والله, لا تفعل. We said, No, you're not going to do this. Wallah, you're not going to do this. Wallah, ما بلغنا أن نبينا يصلي إلا إلى الشام. We only know that our Prophet, he faces a sham, meaning Al-Aqsa, Masjid Al-Aqsa, in a sham. So they, they disagreed with him. قال البراء بن معرور فإني والله لمصلن إليها. He said, no, I'm going to face Al-Kaaba. <laughs> and he disagreed with them. فكان إذا حضرت الصلاة توجه إلى الكعبة وتوجهنا إلى الشام. So every time it was time for Salah, we would face Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and he would face Al-Kaaba. And they would pray. حتى قدمنا مكة until we arrived in مكة فقال لي البراء بن معرور so now until we reached مكة البراء بن معرور came to كعب بن مالك and he said to him يا ابن أخي انطلق بنا إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى أسأله عما صنعته في سفري هذا he says to uh, كعب بن مالك he says you know uh, let's go let's go to uh, the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم I want to ask you ask him about what I did I want to ask him about praying to الكعبة like yeah. Like I felt there was something wrong because you guys disagreed with me and I was doing something different. So we went, started me, uh, trying to meet and find the Prophet وسلم, searching for him. They've no, they had never seen him before. They didn't know how he looks like. These were new Muslims. They didn't know how he looks like. فلقينا رجلا بالأبطح. We found someone in Mecca, in one of the areas. فقلنا له هل تدلنا على محمد بن عبد الله بن عبد المطلب؟ We asked him where can we find محمد بن عبد الله بن عبد المطلب؟ فقال هل تعرفانه إن رأيتماه؟ We said could you recognize him if you saw him؟ فقلنا لا والله ما نعرفه. He said no we don't know him we don't know who he looks like. ولم نكن رأينا رسول الله we've never seen him. فقال فهل تعرفان العباس ابن عبد المطلب؟ So this guy asked us do you know العباس بن عبد المطلب who's the uncle of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم؟ فقلنا نعم. He said yes we know him. وقد كنا نعرفه كان يختلف إلينا بالتجارة. He said yes we know العباس because he used to come to مدينة for business. So he was known in مدينة. فقال فإذا دخلت مال المسجد فانظر العباس. He said go to the masjid near the Kaaba and search for العباس. فهو الرجل الذي معه. You're gonna find Muhammad sitting right next to العباس. They're they're together. فدخلنا المسجد فإذا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وسلم والعباس ناحية المسجد جالسين. When we entered the masjid, we found the Prophet ﷺ with Al-Abbas sitting together. فسلمنا, we gave them salam, ثم جلسنا, we sat with them, فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم للعباس. The Prophet ﷺ said to Al-Abbas. So they gave salam and they sat down, they joined them. The Prophet ﷺ asks his uncle, Al-Abbas, هل تعرف هذين الرجلين يا أبا الفضل? He says, do you know these two people? Like it seems they came and just gave salam and they sat down. They must have, there must be some knowledge, some acquaintance here. فقال عباس نعم عباس says I know them هذا البراء بن معرور سيد قومه this is البراء بن معرور he's the most senior among his people he's a leader وهذا كعب بن مالك the other one is كعب بن مالك now كعب بن مالك is the narrator of the story listen to what he says now he puts his own thoughts he says فوالله ما أنسى قول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he says I will never forget the response of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he heard my name the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said uh, when Al-Abbas told him, he said, this is Ka'b uh, ibn Malik, 
the Prophet ﷺ says, Ash-Sha'ir, the poet, he said, uh, Ka'bi Malik says, Wallahi, I never forgot, I will never forget the response of the Prophet, that he recognized me. So Al-Abbas said, yes, فَقَالَ الْبَرَاءَ Now Al-Bara' ibn Ma'roor is going to ask the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Ya Rasulullah, إِنِّي قَدْ كُنْتُ رَأَيْتُ فِي سَفَرِي هَذَا رَأْيَا فَقَدْ أَحْبَبْتُ أَنْ أَسْأَلَكَ عَنْهُ لِتُخْبِرَنِي مَا عَمَّا صَنَعْتُ فِي so the Messenger of Allah I had an opinion when we were traveling here and I want to ask you about it so you give me the response, give me your response, give me the judgment. I decided not to give the Kaaba my back so I prayed towards it, I took it as my Qibla. The Prophet said, you were commanded to follow a qibla. You should have been patient. You should have been patient. Because the Prophet his feeling tells him that Allah is going to change the direction. But it wasn't time. Upon hearing the response of the Prophet he just goes back to pray towards Bayt al-Maqdas. Now, during the Hajj season, when the Hajj is over after Arafah, coming back from Arafah, and then it was Eid time, then there's Ayyam al-Tashriq. Ayyam al-Tashriq, the days, the rest of the days of Al-Eid, right? When people start slaughtering the animals, or they start throwing the stones. These rituals were still there. They were still there because they were handed down from the time of Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam. During these days, uh, they agree with the Prophet ﷺ to meet him in the middle of the night. These Muslims who came from Medina, and give him the bay'ah, give him a covenant, an agreement. Ka'b ibn Malik narrates the story as well. He says, وَعَدْنَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعَقَبَةَ أَوْسَطَ أَيَّامِ التَّشْرِيقِ He gave the Prophet an appointment in the middle of the days of tashriq, we're going to meet him. وَنَحْنُ سَبْعُونَ رَجُلًا لِلْبَيْعَةِ We are 70 people. We're going to give him bay'ah. وَمَعَنَا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ ibn عَمْرِ ibn Haram. Among us is Abdullah ibn Haram, the father of Jabir bin Abdullah, the famous companion. وَإِنَّهُ لَعَلَى شِرْكِهِ جَاءَ Abdullah ibn Haram is still non-Muslim. فَقُلْنَا يَا أَبَا جَابِرْ وَاللَّهِ إِنَّا لَنَرْغَبُ بِكَ أَنْ تَمُوتَ عَلَى مَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِ فَتَكُونَ لِهَذِهِ النَّارِ غَدًا حَطَبًا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ بَعَثَ رَسُولًا يَأْمُرُ بِتَوْحِيدِهِ وَعِبَادَتِهِ وَقَدْ أَسْلَمَ رِجَالٌ مِنْ قَوْمِكَ وَقَدْ وَعَدْنَا رَسُولَ and if you die upon other than Islam, you're going to end up in the hellfire. You're going to burn in the hellfire. And Allah has sent a prophet who calls people to the truth. And you people have followed him. Why don't you just join us and become a Muslim? He agreed. He accepted Islam. And he sort of took a bath. And then he joined them. And he became one of the most important Muslims there in that bay'ah. فَلَمَّا كَانَتِ اللَّيْلَةُ الَّتِي وَاعَدْنَا فِيهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى 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 اللَّهِ in Mina. In Mina. You know where the mountains are in Mina? In the middle of the mountains. That's where they accept, they uh, agreed to meet the Prophet ﷺ in the middle of the night. So how did they meet? Ka'b ibn Malik narrates the story. He says, فَلَمَّا اسْتَثْقَلَ النَّاسُ فِي النَّوْمِ تَسَلَّلْنَا مِنْ قُرَيْشٍ تَسَلُّلَ الْقَطَارِ People were camping in Mina. When people started falling asleep after midnight, we started uh, sneaking out individually from our camps, just like little birds, without making any noise, without drawing attention. So we sneaked out, and uh, until we all gathered in Al-Aqaba. It's in the middle of these mountains. It's in the middle of the mountains of Mina. Until we all gathered there, فَأَتَانَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ الْعَبَّاسِ The Prophet ﷺ came, and his uncle Al-Abbas was, was with him. Al-Abbas is non-Muslim at that time. He's non-Muslim. But he, wants, he sees it as his responsibility and duty to protect his nephew, the Prophet It's only the Prophet Al-Abbas. wanted to witness that what was happening. He was concerned for the Prophet And he was the first person to speak. So he said, Al-Abbas now speaks publicly to about 70 men and two women or three women. فَقَالْ إِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا مِنَّا حَيْثُ قَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ Al-Abbas, as in Arabic, كَانَ جَهُورِيَّ الصَّوْتِ Abbas had a very loud, strong, deep voice. 
So he spoke to you. He said, Inna Muhammadan minna haythu qad alimtum. He says, Muhammad among us is what you know. He's protected. He's respected within his family. وَهُوَ فِي مَنَعَةٍ مِنْ قَوْمِهِ وَبِلَادِهِ And he's being protected in his hometown. وَقَدْ مَنَعْنَاهُ We are protecting him. It's our responsibility. وَقَدْ مَنَعْنَاهُ مِمَّنْ هُوَ عَلَى مِثْلِ رَأْيِنَا فِيهِ We protected him against people who disbelieve in him just like I disbelieve in his message. Mr. Abbas, he's saying, like, I protect Muhammad from people who just take the same stance as me towards Islam. I don't accept it. But still I protect him. وَقَدْ أَبَى إِلَّا لِنْقِطَاعَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَإِلَى مَا دَعُوتُمُوهُ إِلَيْهِ And Muhammad insists to join you in Medina, to join you in Medina, and he accepts your promise to protect him and help him. فَإِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَرَوْنَ أَنَّكُمْ وَافُونَ لَهُ بِمَا دَعُوتُمُوهُ فَأَنْتُمْ وَمَا تَحَمَّلْتُمْ If you find yourselves capable of protecting him and fulfilling your promise to him, then that's your responsibility. You have to fulfill it. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ تَخْشَوْنَ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ خُذْلَانًا فَاتْرُكُوهُ فِي قَوْمَ And if you guys feel you won't be able to hold this responsibility, leave him among his people. Very strong word. If you guys think you can't fulfill that responsibility, leave him among us. He's safe with us. We're going to take care of him. فَقُلْنَا So now some of the Ansar say, قَدْ سَمِعْنَا مَا قُلْتْ We've heard what you had to say. تَكَلَّمْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ They turn to the Prophet and says, they say, O oh Messenger of Allah, you speak. We want to hear from you. So the Prophet spoke. He spoke about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made dua. And he recited Quran. وَتَلَى الْقُرْآنَ وَرَغَّبَ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ And he invited them again to Islam. فَأَجَبْنَاهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ بِهِ وَالتَّصْدِيقِ لَهُ And we expressed our faith in him and our acceptance of the message. وَقُلْنَا لَهُ Then they said to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasool Allah, خُذْ لِرَبِّكَ وَنَفْسِكَ They said, O Messenger of Allah, demand whatever you want for yourself and for your Lord. We are ready. We are willing to give you whatever you want. So the Prophet ﷺ said, فَقَالَ إِنِّي أُبَايِعُكُمْ عَلَىٰ أَن تَمْنَعُونِي مِمَّا مَنَعْتُمْ مِنْهُ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَكُمْ all I want from you is that you guys provide me with protection, just as you protect your family and your children. فقال البراء بن معرور البراء بن معرور Okay, the same person who turned to الكعبة in the prayer. فقال البراء بن معرور says نعم indeed والذي بعثك بالحق ما نمنع منه أجرنا فبايعنا يا رسول الله So he says, O Messenger of Allah, indeed. We shall protect you as we protect our families. فَبَايِعْنَا يَا رَسُولُ Oh, Messenger of Allah, give us the bay'ah. Give us the agreement. Accept our agreement. فَنَحْنُ وَاللَّهِ أَهْلُ الْحَرْبِ We are the people of war. We are the real warriors. And people of Medina were known to be the best warriors, among the best warriors in the Arabian Peninsula, by the way. They were known um, to be amongst the, the best warriors in the Arabian Peninsula. Very strong, very skillful in warfare. وَأَهْلُ الْحَلَقَةِ And we are the, the people of the battle. وَرِثْنَاهَا كَابِرًا عَنْ كَابِرٍ This strength was handed down to us from one, gen one generation down to the, to the other. فَعَرَضَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ أَبُوا الْهَيْثَمِ التَّيْهَا As Al-Bara' ibn Marur is speaking, another man from the Ansar speaks up. He interjects. His name is Abu al-Haytham al-Tayhan. He says, فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ بَيْنَنَا أَقْوَامًا إِنَّ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَ أَقْوَامِنَا حِبَالًا He says between us and our people and between us and other people there are links. There are links. There are strings. There are relationships. وَإِنَّا قَاطِعُوهَا And we shall cut them off. Because just by accepting Muhammad وسلم, everyone is going to give up on them. So it's a serious matter. فَهَلْ عَسَيْتَ إِنِ اللَّهُ أَظْهَرَكَ أَنْ تَرْجِعَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمِكَ وَتَدَعَنَا He's saying to the Prophet ﷺ, if Allah gives you power and dominance and strength, are you going to leave us after all of this and then join your people? This is not rude. This is being honest. This is being clear. He, they want to know what is upon them and what is for them. 
We want to be clear right from the beginning. That's a serious matter. There's a lot of you know, violence that's going to be sparked by other people once they see Muhammad Sallallahu has got some protection and help and support. So these people want to make sure that this covenant is going to go for good. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ This is how the Prophet Sallallahu responds to this concern. He says, بَلِ الدَّمُ الدَّمْ He says, my blood is your blood. وَالْهَدْمُ الْهَدْمُ And I'm with you, you know, with the good and the bad. I'm like, I'm bec- I become part of you. أَنَا مِنْكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ مِنِّي I am from you and you are from me. أُسَالِمُ مَنْ سَالَمْتُمْ Whoever is at peace with you is at peace with me. وَأُحَارِبُ مَنْ حَارَبْتُمْ I'm against whoever is against you. That means it's a mutual allegiance. I become one of you. That's it. For good. فَقَالَ الْبُرَاءُ الْبُرَاءُ بْنُ مَعْرُورَ الْبُرَاءُ The most senior among them says أُبْسُطْ يَدَكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ نُبَيَّعْ He said, O Messenger of Allah, extend your hand. We're going to give you, our, we're going to shake out your hand and give you our covenant and agreement. فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَخْرِجُوا إِلَيَّ مِنْكُمْ مُثْنَيْ عَشَرَ نَقِيبًا The Prophet ﷺ says, elect from among you twelve representatives. I give them the bay'ah and it, it covers everyone else. So they chose twelve people from among their seniors and leaders. Among them is As'ad ibn Zurara, the first host of Mus'ab ibn Umair. Al-Bara ibn Ma'roor, the see most senior among them. Abdullah ibn Haram, who had just become Muslim the same night. Okay, he became one of their leaders. Sa'd ibn Ubadah from Al-Aws. Al-Mundhir ibn Amr, another person. Rafi ibn Malik al-Ajlan. Abdullah ibn Rawaha. Sa'd ibn Rabi' uh, Ubadah ibn Samit. Again, Usaid ibn Hudayr wa Abu al-Haytham. Abu al-Haytham al-Tayhan. Or Abu al-Haytham ibn al-Tayhan. Wa an Sa'd ibn Khaythama. These are 12 people. So nine are from the Khazraj. And three from the Aus. You said the Khazraj are much bigger in number than the Aus. So Al-Bara' ibn Ma'roor takes the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu and he shakes the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was the first one to give the bay'ah. And then ev- all the rest of them follow. Now at this moment, what happens? Someone screams to the top of their lung. He says, Ya Ahl al-Jabajib. O oh people in the camps of Mina. Such a loud scream. Such a loud scream. Now Ka'ab ibn Malik, the narrator of this uh, story, he says, فَصَرَخَ الشَّيْطَانُ عَلَى الْعَقَبَةِ بِأَبْعَدَ وَاللَّهِ صَوْتٍ مَا سَمِعْتُهُ قَبْ He said, I've never heard such a loud voice. I've never heard such a piercing voice. He screams so loud, it's the shaytan. Screams, يا أهل الجباجب أو oh, the people in the camps of Mina هلا لكم في مذمم you know watch out of مذمم that's the the you know the derogatory name that the people of Mecca used to give to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he's Muhammad and they call him مذمم which is the opposite of Muhammad Shaitan is using that na- that name هذا محمد والصبات معه وهذا مذمم والصبات معه قد اجتمعوا على حربكم that's Muhammad, Mudammam, he calls him Mudammam. And those apostates, the apostates, they are with him. They have agreed to fight against you. They have agreed to fight against you. فَقَالَ رَسُولَ The Prophet ﷺ, upon hearing this, he says, هَذَا أَزِبُّ الْعَقَبَةِ He says, this is shaitan of this area. The shaitan who lives in this area. هَذَا بْنُ أَزِيب He is the son of Azib. He <laughs> has a father as well. He says, your time shall come. He's threatening the shaytan. Go back to your camps. Go, go back to, to your camps. So Al-Abbas ibn Ubadah, one of them, turns to the Prophet from the, from the Ansar. He says, He says, O Messenger of Allah, by the one who sent you with the truth. إن شئت لنميلن على أهل منا بأسيافنا. If you want, we can attack the people of Mina now and kill them, all of them. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لم نؤمر بذلك. The Prophet said, "We have not been commanded to kill people. We have not been commanded to do this." ارفضوا إلى رحالكم. Go back to your camps. So they went back to their camps, like as I said, l- like they sort of sneaked again into their camps. All of them went back to their beds. 
And then it was morning time, they pretended they were sleeping the whole night. Now Quraysh is sending police groups everywhere because the voice reached them. And they were expecting, they, they heard the Prophet ﷺ was in touch with some people in Medina. So they started investigating, sending groups of, uh, of uh, like warriors investigating, trying to find out if there, is a, if there was anything happening. So a group comes to uh, the camps of Medina. They come to them, and among them, a young man called Al-Harith ibn Hisham, one of the richest people in, in Mecca, Al-Harith ibn Hisham. And he was wearing like flashy shoes, <laughs> beautiful flashy shoes, so beautiful, so extravagant. And then they approach the people in Medina, and they say, Ya Ma'ashar al-Khazraj, O people of Khazraj, إِنَّهُ قَدْ بَلَغَنَا أَنَّكُمْ جِئْتُمْ إِلَىٰ صَاحِبِنَا لِتَسْتَخْرِجُوهُ مِنْ بَيْنِ ظُهُورِنَا We heard that you guys came here to Mecca in order to give support to our friend Muhammad. And that you guys want to take him and protect him. وَإِنَّهُ وَاللَّهِ مَا مِنَ الْعَرَبِ أَحَدٌ أَبْغَضُ إِلَيْنَا أَنْ يَنْشُبَ الْحَرْبُ فِيمَا بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ مِنْكُمْ And there are no people in the Arabian Peninsula or among the Arabs that we hate to fight against more than you. We don't want to fight against you. فَانْبَعَثَ مِنْ هُنَاكَ مِنْ قَوْمِنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ مَا كَانَ مِنْ هَذَا شَيْءٍ وَمَا فَعَلْنَا Some of the non-Muslims among the people of Medina, they're clueless, they don't know anything. They started saying, no, wallahi, nothing, none of this happened. This didn't happen. Really, he doesn't know. He thinks everyone was in the camp. He says, no, wallahi, none of this happened. We didn't give him, we didn't meet Muhammad, we didn't give him anything, we have nothing to do with Muhammad. Uh, so Ka'b Malik, he says, and I am looking at Abdullah ibn Haram, the oldest man who just embraced Islam last night. And he was one of their like seniors. And I look at him and he's quiet, like he's keeping quiet. Because the Muslims now, among the people of Medina, are keeping quiet. They don't want to expose themselves now. He says, he's quiet and I'm quiet. So uh, after having this conversation and asking the people, did you guys meet with Muhammad? We heard this, we heard that. No, none of this happened. They sort of were convinced. So now, Ka'b ibn Malik, he speaks up. Uh, he addresses Abdullah ibn Haram, okay, the older man, but he makes those people of Quraysh hear that. He says, Ya Aba Jabir, anta sayyidun min sadatina. He said, Abu Jabir, as Abdullah ibn Haram. Abu Jabir, you are one of our great leaders. So he's speaking up. You are one of our great leaders and you are one of our seniors. But you can't even buy shoes like this young man. <laughs> you can't afford to buy shoes like this man. Now when this young man, Ubad ibn al-Harith, he sees this, he feels embarrassed. <laughs> he feels embarrassed. And now, by the way, until today with the Arabs, if, if you find an Arab wearing a nice shirt or a nice jacket or nice shoes and say, oh, nice shoes. They're going to take them off and say, take them. <laughs> Until today. Honestly, I witnessed something when I was young. I remember I was still a teenager. And I remember one of the seniors of our in our city. He was such a very good da'i, very good Muslim teacher, subhanAllah. And he was a very popular person, very influential. So a person, ca he, uh, like he had some cancer and he went through uh, some... Uh, surgery and then he was recovering at home and people started visiting him so one person came one rich person came and visited him and he had bought a car which was very expensive at the time it was a mercedes like brand new and it was uh, like it was rare that someone buys a mer mercedes that was brand new and uh, so when he when that person arrived he went and received him outside and he said mashallah beautiful car he said so he looks at him and he says it's yours he says, no, no I, I didn't mean anything like that. I was just, I was, it was an innocent comment. Comment. It was a beautiful car. He says, no, I said it's yours. It's not going to go back. Here's the keys. Tomorrow my son is going to change the ownership. It's going to be yours. And they know you can't, you can't give it back. Now this is not there like as it used to be, but it was still there. So something with, uh, we're <laughs> used to now with the Arabs are changing. But at those times, if you really saw like an Arab wearing something beautiful, I'm telling you, if you just make a comment, he's going to take it off and give it to you. As <laughs> simple as that. So, so he says, you are one of our seniors and leaders and you can't afford to buy shoes like this young man. So the young man looks at, that, uh, looks at them. He takes off his shoes and he throws them at Ubadah. He says, take them. <laughs> take them. So he says, فَسَمِعَهُ الْفَتَى فَخَلَعَنَ عَلَيْهِ فَرَمَا بِهِمَا إِلَيَّ So the young man hears this. 
he takes off his shoes and he throws them at me, the flashy shoes. وَقَالَ وَاللَّهِ لَتَلْبَسَنَّهُمَا And he says, Wallahi, you shall put them on. فَقَالَ أَبُو جَابِرْ Now, the, Abu Jabir, the, young, the older man, he says, مَهْلًا Oh, he says to Ubadah, he says, hold on, man, you, you don't, like, don't take it seriously, don't take the man's shoes. He says, مَهْلًا أَحَفِظْتَ أَوْ أَخْجَلْتَ الرَّجُلْ لَعَمْرَ اللَّهِ He says, you have embarrassed the guy, man. Don't take his shoes. أُرْدُدْ عَلَيْهِنَ عَلَيْهِ give, his, give him his shoes back. فَقُلْتُ لَا وَاللَّهِ لَا أَرُدُّهُمَا I said, no, I shall never give them back to him. فَأَلٌ صالح. It's a good sign for me. وَاللَّهِ إِنِّي لَأَرْجُوا أَنْ أَسْلِبَهُ He says, I hope that one day I will take from him something in the war. I will basically, that I will defeat him in war and I will take the spoils of war from him, from this person specifically. Anyway, so... Uh, just above 70 men and two or three women were among those uh, Muslims who gave the Prophet ﷺ the ban. These are not the only all the Muslims in Medina. There were still many who were in Medina, back in Medina. So the Prophet ﷺ gives them the bay'ah. What was the bay'ah? The Prophet ﷺ says to them, Bay'uni ala sam'i wa ta'ah. Give me your covenant, your agreement to hear, listen, and obey. Fin nashati wal kasal. At times of strength, at times of weakness. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it. Obedience to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that you give from your wealth. At times of abundance and at times of lack. المنكر, and that you enjoin the good and you advise against the evil. And that you say the truth for the sake of Allah without fearing any blame from no one. وَعَلَىٰ أَن تَنْصُرُونِي إِذَا قَدِمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ يَثْرِبْ And that you guys give me protection if I come to you in Yathrib, in Medina. فَمْنَعُونِي مِمَّا تَمْنَعُونَ مِنْهُ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجَكُمْ وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ You protect me as you protect your family, your children. وَلَكُمُ الْجَنَّةِ And in return you will get Jannah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَقُمْنَا نُبَايِعُهُ So we gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the bay'ah. But then As'ad ibn Zurara, he also said something. So these are more details about that time when they met. As'ad ibn Zurara, uh, again, who's As'ad ibn Zurara? Is the host of Mus'ab ibn Umayr. Before the people of Medina give the Prophet the bay'ah and shake his hands, he said, Ruwaydan ya ahla yathrib. He says, oh, people of Medina, hold on. Hold on. He says, إِنَّا لَمْ نَضْرِبْ إِلَيْهِ أَكْبَادَ الْمَطَايَا إِلَّا وَنَحْنُ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He says, we did not come here to Mecca to give the Prophet ﷺ the bay'ah, except that we know he's the messenger of Allah. We have no doubt about this. Okay, no one disagrees with this. But, إِنَّ إِخْرَاجَهُ الْيَوْمُ مُفَارَقَةُ الْعَرَبِ كَافَةِ Giving Muhammad today your covenant and your protection means you guys are going to have enmity with all of the Arabs. You're going to cut yourself off from everyone else. You're going to become the target of everyone in the Arabian Peninsula. وَقَتْلُ خِيَارِكُمْ And that means the best among you will be killed. Because everyone will have enmity towards you. وَأَن تَعَضَّكُمُ السُّيُوفِ And you will be attacked with swords. فَإِمَّا أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ تَصْبِرُونَ عَلَىٰ عَضِّ السُّيُوفِ إِذَا, أم إذا مَسَّتْكُمْ So you either a people who are patient if these swords and this hardship comes to you وَعَلَىٰ قَتْلِ خِيَارِكُمْ and that you're going to be patient even if the best among you are being killed وَعَلَىٰ مُفَارَقَةِ الْعَرَبِ كَافَّةً and if you are patient to go against all of these Arabs فَخُذُوهُ وَأَجْرُكُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ so make this covenant with Muhammad and your reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأَمَّا أَنْتُمْ تَخَافُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ خِيفَةً فَذْرُوهُ But if you guys are scared and you're not going to fulfill this, don't take it. It shows you that's a good, that's, that's a beautiful side of the people of Medina. They're straightforward. They're straightforward. They're not going to give you something to please you. They're not going to say something to please you. They want to call a spade a spade. They want to be so clear about their commitments so clear about their commitment that there is no misinterpretation here or there. The agreement is clear. 
and the commitment is clear and the consequences are clear so that no one says later on oh we thought we didn't realize it was going it's going to go as bad as this no you know from now how bad it's going to get are you willing to take that or not so when he said that to them if you if you will be scared leave him and this is going to be better with you or better for you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than you say we're going to protect him then you fail him or disappoint him so if you can't say it from now okay that's going to be much better with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what, did, what was their response they said to him Amit yadaka ya As'ad ibn Zara. they said get out of here <laughs> simply they said to him get out of here take your hand out of here it's, it's just an expression get out of here okay فَوَاللَّهِ لَا نَذَرُ هَذِهِ الْبَيْعَةِ We're not going to miss this agreement with the Prophet We're not going to compromise on it. وَلَا نَسْتَقِيلُهَا And we will never draw back from it. فَقُمْنَا إِلَيْهِ نُبَايِعُهُ رَجُلًا رَجُلًا So then the Prophet gave them bay'ah. After giving agreement or taking the bay'ah from the 12 representatives, he gave a bay'ah to each one of them. To each one of them. Then the Prophet said to the women, بَيْعَتِي لَكُمْ كَلَامًا كَبَيْعَتِي سلاما. Like I don't shake hand women's hands, but what I say to you and you agree, that's exactly like when I shake the hands of a man. It's the same thing. It has the same effect. So now Islam has gained so much supporters. As we said, the Muslims have become uh, some sort of either a, 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 a big minority or a significant majority in Medina. And the Prophet has so much help. Shortly after this, the Prophet ﷺ sees a dream. And the dream of the Prophet, as the Prophet ﷺ says, رؤية الأنبياء حق. The dream of a Prophet or a Messenger is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet ﷺ says, إِنِّي أُرِيتُ دَارَ هِجْرَتِكُمْ I was shown the destination of your hijrah, of your immigration. ذَاتَ نَخْلٍ بَيْنَ لَابَتَيْنِ It's a land where there's so many palm trees, date trees between two dark areas now these two dark areas are two hills where there are dark black stones a lot of black stones around and that's that's pretty much where like what was the case in Medina فَهَاجَرَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ قِبَلَ الْمَدِينَةِ وَرَجَعَ عَامَّةُ مَنْ كَانَ بِأَرْضِ الْحَبَشَةِ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ وَتَجَهَزَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ قِبَلَ الْمَدِينَةِ so the Muslims started traveling to Medina Muslims in Mecca started migrating to Medina travel moving to Medina and uh, some of the Muslims who were in Abyssinia already, they received the news, they started leaving Abyssinia, going to Medina. Going to Medina. Some of them still stayed in Abyssinia. Abu Bakr wanted to leave as well to Medina. The Prophet ﷺ tells him, Ala rislik fa inni arju an He says to Abu Bakr, hold on, wait. I'm still waiting for the permission to make hijrah. To make hijrah. So Abu Bakr says to the Prophet ﷺ, you were expecting this? The Prophet said, yeah, uh, yes. So Abu Bakr decides to stay in Mecca and he goes and buys two camels, two she camels, and he keeps them ready for the hijrah, for the time of hijrah to come. So the Muslims start traveling. Now there are stories that we have been informed about, about people migrating. Uh, something we have to sometimes uh, acknowledge uh, there are a lot of historical narrations that means they don't have strong chains of narration they're just someone says this and that happened but we don't know exactly like a person let's say Ibn Ishaq Ibn Ishaq he lived roughly a hundred years after the Prophet Sallallahu and he would say you know such and such story happened but we don't know where did he get it from who did he hear the story from so we call this a historical narration Riwaya tarikhiyya, okay? Historical narration. It's not a proper chain of narration. There is no so-and-so told me, he heard from this, he heard from that, so we know exactly how it was handed down. So the story of Umar al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhu, the most famous story is how did he make hijrah? Umar al-Khattab. The famous story that he stood in the middle of Mecca and he said, I am leaving to Medina. فَمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ تَثْكَلَهُ أُمُّهُ فَلِيَلْحَقْ بِهِ I'm going to Medina. Anyone who wants his mother to lose him, Follow me. I'm going to deal with him. But this is a historical narration. 
But we have another narration which actually has a chain of narration and it's authentic. And it's also from Ibn Ishaq. This narration is that Umar al-Khattab wanted to make hijrah. So he agreed with two other people to go as a group of three. To immigrate as three. As three. Was Umar al-Khattab, Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah, and Hisham ibn al-As. <coughs> so Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah, he was the cousin of Abu Jahl. Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah was the cousin of Abu Jahl. But he was also, and that's, that's different because at their time, it was common that if a woman, uh, if a man dies and he leaves his wife behind, who would usually marry her? His brother. So you would commonly find people who are cousins and brothers at the same time. So the so Abu Jahl and uh, Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah were cousins and brothers at the same time. They shared the same mother. Because when the father of one of them died, the mother married the other uh, his brother. So they became they shared the same mother but different father, and the f the fathers were brothers anyway. Even if you don't uh, understand this, just leave it. But anyway, so Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah. And Abu Jahl were brothers and cousins at the same time. Brothers from the same mother. They shared the same mother. So they were, huh? Half, yeah, he was a half brother of uh, Abu Jahl and he was his cousin. So they agree in a place to the north of Mecca called Al Mida'ah. Al Mida'ah. It's a place where they could agree, uh, where they could meet. And it was Fajr time to meet there and sneak out of Mecca. That's the authentic narration. Sneak out of Mecca. And they said to each other, anyone who doesn't show by Fajr, we're not going to wait for him. That means he couldn't come, so we're just going to set out. So Umar ibn Khattab came, and Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah came, who's the half-brother and the cousin of Abu Jahl. Hisham ibn al-As, the third person, could not make it. <coughs> so he wasn't there. So they decided to leave, set off Mecca together. Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah and Umar ibn Khattab. And they leave. They travel secretly, secretly, until they're very close to Medina. Now, we have to understand, Medina was a small city. To the south of Medina was a village called Banu Amr ibn Awf. This is where Masjid Quba is. It was a village separate from Medina to the south. It's called today Quba. That's where Masjid Quba is. It was called Qarya to Bani Amr ibn Awf, the village of Banu Amr ibn Awf. The Muslims, when they migrated, they first settled there. Before settling in Medina, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're going to explain the details later on. When they reached Quba, it wasn't known as Quba, it was known as Banu Amr ibn Awf. When they reached that village, who was chasing them? It was Abu Jahl, uh, the two half brothers of Hisham ibn Ayyash. Uh, it was uh, Abu Jahl and his brother Al Harith. Abu Jahl, who's Amr ibn Hisham, and his brother Al Harith ibn Hisham. They catch up with them and they say to Ayyash, they say, Your mother, who's our mother, like, she made a vow that she's not going to take a bath, she's not going to wash herself, she's not going to comb her hair until you come back. It's a, w it's a way to put pressure on him. And he loved his mother so much. Hisham ibn Ayyash loved his mother so much. He used to take so much care of her, like uh, exceptional care of her. So the, huh? Hisham ibn Ayyash, yes. The, huh? Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah, yes. Ayyash, sorry. Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah. Now names are just getting together. Yes, yes. Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah. Okay, Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah. So uh, yeah, they, s they convince Ayyash to come with them back to Mecca just sort things out with his mother and then he could leave again to Medina because he traveled secretly and she wasn't, they said she wasn't prepared for that. Now Umar ibn Khattab is a very wise man. Umar ibn Khattab is very sharp. This is why he has a beautiful statement. He says, Lestu bil khab, walal yakhda'uni. He says, I am not a treacherous person. I'm not a dodgy person. But also I don't let treacherous people or dodgy people 
set me up. I don't fall for the traps. So Umar Khattab, very wise person, he could see through these arguments and these tricks. So he says to Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah, he says, listen, he has actually beautiful statements. So I'm going to read it in Arabic, then I'm going to translate it. He says, فَقُلْتُ لَهُ يَا عَيَّاش So I say, I say to Ayyash, I say, يَا عَيَّاش وَاللَّهِ إِنْ يُرِيدُكَ الْقَوْمُ إِلَّا عَنْ دينك. What these guys, what these two guys, your half-brothers, want from you is actually basically they want to push you out of Islam. They want to get hold of you and force you out of Islam. فَحْذَرْهُمْ So just be careful. فَوَاللَّهِ لَوْ قَدْ آذَا أُمُّكَ الْقَمْلِ لَمْ تَشَطَتْ So Allah, if your mother is bothered by the lice in her head, she's going to wash herself and comb her hair. Don't worry about that. قَالَ عَيَّاشِ إِنَّ لِي هُنَاكَ مَالًا فَأَخُدُهُ He says, you know what? I also left some money back in Mecca. I'll just go and I'll pick my money again. That's an excuse. I'll pick my money, then I will come back. فَقُلْتُ عُمَرُ الْخَطَّابِ says to him, وَاللَّهِ إِنَّكَ لَتَعْلَمُ أَنِّي مِنْ أَكْثَرِ قُرَيْشٍ مَالًا You know that I'm among the richest in Mecca. I have a lot of money. فَلَكَ نِصْفُ مَالِي Take half of my money. Leave your money back in Mecca. I'm going to give you half of my money. If it's money thing, I'm going to give you half of my money. فَلَكَ نِصْفُ مَالِي وَلَا تَذْهَبْ مَعْهُمَا Don't go with them. فَأَبَا إِلَّا أَنْ يَخْرُجَ مَعْهُمَا Ayash insisted to go with them. He said, no, I'm just going to go with them. فَقُلْتُ لَهُ لَمَّا أَبَا عَلَيَّ Look at this brotherhood, the level of brotherhood. Umar al-Khattab didn't say, okay, you don't want to listen to me? You know, I don't care. Whatever happens, happens. He didn't say that. He didn't take it personally. He said, أَمَا إِذَا فَعَلْتَ مَا فعلت? Since you've just decided to do that and go with them, فَخُذْ نَاقَتِي هَذِهِ Take my camel. فَإِنَّهَا ذَلُولٌ فَلْزَمْ ظَهْرَهَا It's very easy going. It's easy to ride. It's easy to control. And it's very fast. فَلْزَمْ ظَهْرَهَا Don't ever get off its back. Stay there on top, ready to basically to escape in case something happens. فَإِنْ رَابَكَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ رَيْبٌ فَنْجُوا عَلَيْهَا So if you feel there's anything dodgy going on there, anything being, you know, anything that, you know, you're skeptical, skeptical about something, just escape. Run on, they can't catch up with you. فَخَرَجَ مَعَهُمَا So he leaves with his two half-brothers. Who are they? Uh, Abu Jahl and Hisham. Uh, Al-Harith, Al-Harith, yeah, Al-Harith ibn Hisham. So with, with both, Abu Jahl and Al-Harith. So he leaves with them. On the way, Abu Jahl says to uh, Ayyash, he says, Wallahi laqad istabta'tu ba'iri hadha. He says, you know, my camel is very slow. And he's not moving, he's not like moving well. Afala tahmiluni ala naqatik. Would you like to swap, give me your camel and you take my camel? Qala Ayyash bala. He says, like, he's a very nice, innocent person. He says, yes, no, no worries. As soon as the camel sits down and he's trying to get off it, they jump on him, they tie him up, and they drag him to Mecca. And they keep him in captivity. They keep him in captivity. And Umar al Khattab says, They force him out of Islam and he leaves Islam. He doesn't leave Islam in reality, but he says, I give up on Islam. خلاص, I give up on Islam just to get away from the torture and the, the hardship. So he apparently leaves Islam or he claims to leave Islam. So. So he says, Umar al-Khattab says, I always feared for him that he might be one of the hypocrites because he actually chose to go back. And also the other one who was uh, the third person who never showed up, Hisham ibn al-As. Um, and then later on, a few months later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the, actually the verses that uh, Brother Adil recited in Salat al-Isha. In the first rak'ah, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves, never fall or never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Never lose hope. That's the end of Surah Al-Zumar. So Umar al-Khattab said, as soon as I heard the verse, I wrote it in a piece on a piece of paper and I sent it to Hisham ibn al-As back in Mecca, the one who didn't show up for the meeting. And when Hisham saw that, he said, I kept reading it, reading it, reading it until I figured out that's an opportunity for us to make amends because we didn't make hijrah. By the way, something at the time, uh, at that time, when Muslims made hijrah, it was an obligation. It was an obligation. It wasn't a choice. And people who decided 
to stay in Mecca when they were capable of leaving those the Muslims there they feared for them hypocrisy they feared for actually Umar al-Khattab says in this narration he says فكنا نقول والله لا يقبل الله ممن افتتن صرفا ولا عدلا Umar al-Khattab is saying anyone who was tried and forced out of their religion and these are the people who stayed in Mecca we said about them that Allah was not going to accept from them anything, any of their deeds. وَلَا يَقْبَلُ تَوْبَةَ قَوْمٍ عَرَفُوا اللَّهَ ثُمَّ رَجَعُوا إِلَى الْكُفْرِ لِبَلَاءٍ أَصَابَهُمْ And we used to say Allah would not accept the tawbah of people who have came to know Allah, who have come to know Allah. They embraced Islam and then they went to kufr, disbelief, because they were forced into it. لِبَلَاءٍ أَصَابَهُمْ Because of the, the persecution that they had to go through. This is what they, we used to say about them. So it was a serious matter not to leave Mecca and go to, Ma- and to, go to Medina. A Muslim could, had no choice about this. They had to go regardless. This is why people left their money. Some people had to leave their family because they were non-Muslim. You could not stay with your family. You had to leave your family and go to Medina. It was an obligation. It was, an obli- was a great sin not to make the migration to Medina if you are able to. It was a great sin, one of the major sins at the time. Anyway, so later on, Hisham ibn Aas, upon reading this verse, and Ayyash, again, when they hear about this, they manage to escape, and they make it back to Medina, and they join the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There are other people who had some interesting stories when it came to, uh, when it came to the uh, Hijrah. Umm Salama and Abu Salama, radiyallahu anhuma, the two great companions, uh, they were in Abyssinia, al Habasha. But they left al Habasha earlier. Why? Why? Because there was a rumor that the people of Mecca embraced Islam. So some of the Muslims who left Abyssinia went back to Mecca. So when they were, when they were in Mecca, they came to Mecca, realized it was just a rumor. So they stayed in Mecca. Now they were starting to leave to Medina now. So Umm Salama says, when uh, we decided to make Hijrah, so Abu Salama prepares the camel. Uh, they had one camel. And he gets me to ride over the camel. And I have my baby, my toddler. He was a toddler, a little boy, uh, on my lap. And my husband, Abu Salama, was holding the rope of the camel and he was leading me. Then my family, her family, catch up with them. And they say to him, if you're going to make hijrah yourself, we don't have an issue with this. You want to take the risk, join Muhammad. That was a, like a risky business. You want to do that, do that. But you're not going to take our daughter, who's your wife. You're not going to take her. We're not going to allow you to do this. So if you want to go, you go without her. And they held the camel. And they won't let go of Umm Salama. And, uh, Umm Salama. So she had to stay, he had to leave. He had to leave. He leaves. Now his family hears about this. His family, his cousins, his uncles, his brothers, they hear about this. They say, okay, okay. They go to the family of Umm Salama. They say, okay, you want your daughter, you want to keep her there, fine. But the boy carries the name of his father. He's one of us. You give him to us. (laughs) He's going to stay with his father's family. They They fight over the boy. That family pulls him from this arm. The other family pulls him from the arm until they dislocate his shoulder. <laughs> then the family of his father take the boy. And now the mother, Umm Salama, is without her husband, without her boy. And she's stuck in Mecca. And her boy is with his uncles and cousins. And Abu Salama had to go to Medina. And Umm Salama was in such a miserable state. Every day she goes out of her house, she sits somewhere in Mecca, and she cries from sunrise to sunset. And we're going to find next week, inshallah, what happens next. (laughs) Okay. So inshallah, we meet next week, same time after Isha, to carry on with this hero of the Prophet. Any questions? We can take a couple of questions, inshallah. No questions? Um, uh, I 
think he he, is, he recited. Uh, I forgot what what did, what did we start. <sighs> it's probably probably he recited surat. Uh, what is that? How many? I can't remember which one of the Hawamim that he mentioned, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi recited. Just one second. Do we have any other questions until I figure out, uh, I find out the results? Yeah. How, how did they what? Okay. do they know because they came and they learned uh, Musa bin Umayyad taught them yes of course so yeah the brother is asking uh, how did the people from Medina know how to pray yeah uh, the the ones who embraced Islam first they learned from the Prophet Sallallahu and they taught Musa bin Umayyad taught as well yeah so very simple uh, yeah I think it was Surah Al-Zukhruf he recited Surah Al-Zukhruf to them. Yes, he recited Surah Al-Zukhruf. Yes, Muhammad. Iyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah. Huh? Yes, yes. Iyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah after being taken by Abu Jahl and Al-Harith. Uh, they kept him in captivity and they forced him out of Islam. But after a while, okay, he managed to escape and join the Muslims in Medina. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, he w uh, yeah, when he was captive, he was still a Muslim, but he was hiding his Islam. He had to openly show that he left Islam. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the Muslims had doubts. They had concerns with people who stayed in, in Mecca. But that was resolved after that verse was revealed. Yes, yeah. Thank you. I really don't know. I haven't thought about that. Hey, who Akid my Hadar? Uh, I'm not sure if he had or not. We can we look into this, inshallah. We'll look into this. Yes, I, I don't remember anything. But as I'm not sure. Naam. Naam, naam. We'll see, inshallah. Or I will check it out. Jazakallah. Tayyip, any more questions? Yeah? Okay, yes. Tadal. Between Mecca and Medina, the travel on camels was roughly around three days at those times. The fastest route was roughly three, three to five days. That would be, yeah, this is how it would say. Tayyib, Jazakumullah Khair, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Wa Alaihi Wasallam.